Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Gorilla Blood Radio. My name is Daniel Korea, and as always, I'm here with our advocating Jew, Scott NDX. What's up, Scott, out in New York City? Uh oh. We'll go with that. That a sigh. Oh, jeez. Busy day, rough day. A rough week. Oh man. Um, we were supposed, we went to the Bronx Zoo today. Okay. You know, it was friggin' nearly ninety degrees today, so it was like murder. <laughs> Dying. And um, we found out two days ago that we had no buses for it. Oh shit. Yeah. 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 So. We finally found out we got buses yesterday. Yay. Yeah. So we're going to cancel that damn trip because it's an hour and a half to get there by train. Jeez. That's, That's just to get there. Yeah, that would have sucked. Shit. Yeah, because, you know, as staff, we can't sit down. Just the kids. Weird. Okay. No, we have to stand by the doors to make sure our, you know. Kids don't get taken. <laughs> yeah, our kids just wander out because, you know, fucking kids. Yep. Being the pain in the butts that they are. So, yeah, that that happened today, and you know, partial heat stroke, dehydration. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Other than that, was a zoo cool? No. No. <laughs> the bears and tigers were missing the first time we went around. I was like, man, if we don't see some fucking lions at least, we're not in Kansas anymore. Did you finally see a lion? Yeah, but they're all fucking lazy and sleeping on rocks. No. God damn it. See, God damn it is right. See, that's the, the, the main difference a lot of times. The zoo is just, they kind of just put the animals on display, at least with a place like out here uh, in California, um, SeaWorld San Diego. Up here we have a thing uh, called uh, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, which is, um, tig- they used to have tiger shows and stuff like that. They actually perform. I think that's more fun than a zoo. Then you just kind of seeing them lounging, doing nothing. Yeah, just like, fuck you, I'm tired, it's hot. I'm like, you're from Africa! Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, dude, what do you do? Yeah, it shouldn't be... But you know it's fucked up when the polar bear just looks at you like, I'm drinking cold water and laying down. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> oh, man. Didn't make an, a no, no animals making an escape like in Madagascar? Nothing like that? Well, and no children fell into the gorilla pit because there's no gorillas in the gorilla pit. No. No, uh, no fecal matter thrown by the little asshole monkeys? No, but the baboons, while we were having a lunch, were like going ape shit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're all making noises and shit at you. No, they weren't. They were just chasing each other around. You're playing grab ass. It's like watching uh, Tyler Black versus Austin Aries. <laughs> that infamous match that went way too long. Ugh. Shoot. Well, man, another uh, week in the books, uh, with the exception, again, of uh, us taping here on a weekday uh, that's not Friday when this airs normally. Uh, still waiting on Impact Wrestling to show, but we did get to see the uh, second installment of the Cruiserweight Classic, man. Holy shit. Yeah, it's just already gotten better than the first episode. Yeah, holy shit. Now, I, I'm, I don't I, I don't got the names in front of me. Let's see, do you remember the names of the guys who fought yesterday? No, and if I look it up, somebody's gonna spoil something for me. Okay, let me let me let me look and see what I can find. Um NXT, or not NXT, CWC results, uh, 720. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I found it. Thank, Yay! Thank you, Wrestling Inc. was almost prepared. Yeah, thank you, Wrestling Inc. for this. Uh, let's see here. Um, we had the opening contest was a return. Super Watch Law with a 20-minute time limit. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, legitimate. Sorry, that just automatically happened. So yeah, <laughs> or if you're in England, one fall, chound it back at people. Um, Tajiri returns to the WWE for the first time in, I don't know, eight years, it seems like. Um, Japanese Buzzsaw! Uh, against the Aussie, Damian Slater. 
this match was pretty good considering I had no idea who Slater was. Um, and Slater's offense was similar to Tajiri's where he likes to kick people, but Tajiri kicks a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, because he's motherfucking Tajiri. Yeah. And we got to see our uh, our favorite tarantula move, uh, which was great. Um, yeah, man. I mean, Slater, I mean, good good little wrestler, man. He's quick. He's got some good uh, good kicks. Uh, doesn't He high flies a little bit. Um, but not very well. I think you stick to ground and pound and uh, chain wrestling, uh, uh, submission style wrestling for him. Yeah. So, um, but uh, Tajiri, uh, the veteran that he is, uh, one Tajiri up, was Tajiri. Yeah, Buzzsaw. Maybe a little bit slower Tajiri, but he was still Tajiri. Yeah, Buzzsaw kick and the knockout with the pin. Tajiri moves on in the tournament. Uh, also uh, on this card, we had a. Uh, a match between T.J. Perkins, the uh, the the I don't know what nickname you can give him, but like the Filipino dance machine or whatever, however you want to call him, his nickname T.J. Perkins, man, T.J.P. This guy is is good. You probably know him better as Puma from back in the day, or Suicide, or Manic, or whatever, however you want to call. T.J. Perkins or T.J. Perkins himself, yeah, he wrestles as himself. Uh, against the urban German Demac, um, who for some reason had hot and spicy on the back of his tights, which is hilarious. Yeah, I didn't get that because there's like you know maybe you should have smooth criminal back there instead. Yeah, that would be smart. That would considering he was a Michael Jackson kind of gimmick, that makes more sense. You know, and I think that would have been you know a little bit more interesting. Plus, I think fans might have got behind him. They might have sung smooth criminal. Bit. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, this match, dude, this was good. This match oh, was. Good. Great little match. Real I actually good. liked watching the Mac. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind seeing him, you know, do something in the States more. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's definitely got the uh, the Michael Jackson vibe going. He's dancing, having a good time. Uh, he's got the showmanship. I don't know if WWE's going to sign him, considering they just signed Rich Swan, who has basically a similar gimmick about dancing and having a good time. Um, but Mac showed me a lot. I, I think he's got he's got a future in in the states for sure. Now, uh, I mean, hopefully he's definitely stays. fun to watch. Yeah, but uh, T.J. Perkins, man, just freaking killed it, killed yeah, it. Yeah, I know crapped on Perkins in the past because of a few matches I saw that were pretty bad stinkers. But man, he showed me a lot last night, and the way they're pushing him. I'd love to see him on Raw as part of the cruiserweight division. Yeah, he's. I think he's going to be one of those guys that gets there. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot of uh, high flying stuff in this match too. TJ does the high flying stuff, but he also now he's kind of becoming more of a uh, a technical guy, which is great for him. Um, and, oh man, he was pulling out submissions like no tomorrow. Yeah, and stuff like certain things that I'd never seen. I mean, really, you, you, I don't think anybody else does. It looks like he's gonna go for a head scissors, and then kind of stops midway, and then hangs there for a little bit and then pulls him over afterwards. Uh, it's just really weird. You think the guy's going to like flip over and it almost is like a like a neck twist, like a neck breaker or something, I think, with using his feet. <laughs> it's weird. Um, yeah, man. It's a good, fast offense. And uh, Perkins uh, winds up getting the win with a knee bar. So, again. Which is what you would expect. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty damn good. The Mac, uh, the Mac held his own. I don't think he's gonna get signed by WWE, but I hope definitely that he uh, somebody takes notice and gives him chances. In the nice States. Yeah, that that would be fun. So, uh, we got uh, what possibly could have been match of the fucking night. Uh, Musta That's including NXT. Yeah, Mustafa Ali and Lince Dorado, the Golden Lynx. Um, dude. <laughs> this match was awesome. What did I say after the match was over? Ah, uh, what did you say after the match is over? Sign these two now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, freaking Mustafa Ali. I had no idea who he was beforehand. And I'll, now I got to see more of his. Matches. And and I love the fact again with a name like Mustafa Ali. WWE, especially in this time and age, knows make him the heel. He was the heel right from the get go. It goes for the handshake in the middle. He slaps uh, Lince Dorado's hand right out the way. Um, dude, these guys, 
the the freaking high flying going to the outside. The personification of what we know, cruiserweight wrestling. Yeah, and and again, this one again, if you like high flying spot, this match was for you. Um, there was at one point in time, I thought Mustafa Ali was dead because Lince Dorado hit a reverse Hurricane Rana on him, and Ali landed on his head. I After thought, springboarding off the middle rope backwards. Yeah, so he caught him on his shoulders off the springboard, and then Dorado just fell backwards into the Rana, and Ali just, bleh. I thought he, I thought he got spiked. I thought he was hurt, and then he got oh, up. Man, it was beautiful. But what really impressed me was the ability of Mustafa to mix really nice strikes and some interesting high flying moves. Like Dorado goes to the top rope, uh, Ali counters, and then springboards from the second rope on one side to the top rope on the other into a motherfucking Spanish fly. Yeah, that was great. That was uh, a one man Spanish fly. Yeah. That was that was, fucking sweet. It was the move of the match, and he and that didn't and that didn't win it. That's the kicker. Ali hit that move and it didn't work. And then on top of that, he goes back up to the top rope and like a freaking uh, a high diver stands on the edge of the top rope and instead of flipping backwards, he flips under. He did an inverted 450 and missed. <laughs> Oh, man, but if he hit it. Oh, my God. And then Lince Dorado, shooting star press, one, two, three. Oh. Beautiful shooting star press, too. Oh, holy shit. It's like, wow, there's your match to beat for the tournament right now. Yeah, exactly. Holy shit, that was good. And let me just say, the next match, try. They tried. They did pretty darn good. Uh, Kira Tozawa and Kenneth Johnson. Kenneth Johnson, I think they said something like he's got like functioning autism or some sort of illness, and he yeah, was stutter. yeah or stutter or something. I knew it was something crazy, some weird crazy thing. Like I, I don't know, maybe if it's a stutter or Tourette's, or I don't know what it is. But I just he this guy came out firing because Akira Tozawa. You may if you if you followed stuff, you've heard his name before. He's a Dragon Gate guy, Dragon Gate USA guy. Um, so I knew he was, I didn't never really seen his matches, but I knew who he was. Kenneth Johnson booked in this match as the eternal underdog. Dude took it to Tozawa. Holy shit. I like how Daniel Bryan even pointed out how Johnson was actually the reason why Tozawa was countering so much. It wasn't like Tozawa was trying to play Johnson. Johnson was really screwing with uh, Tozawa at first. Mm -hmm. And Tozawa really had no idea how to counter uh, all his actions. The best part of this match for me, because it made me laugh so much, um, they were doing a, a chop battle in the middle of the ring. Yeah. And then Tozawa st stops the chop and freaking slaps him in the face. I think that was this match. Pretty yes. Okay. I, all I know is just like he's just saying, no, oh, nope, it was a slap in the face. Like he looks like he's going to chop and he stops and Johnson prays for our impact and then boom, just like uppercut, like open palm to the jaw. Just right in the face. Yeah. I but Johnson wouldn't go down, man. Yeah, not without a fight, dude. Not without a fight at all. Whole he screwed up a top rope flip of some sort. I mean, you couldn't tell what the fuck was going on there. Yeah. But otherwise, and remember, it's freaking, you know, high flying, high risk, you know, a lot of fuck ups, shit's gonna happen, folks so don't get turned about it, we're fine. Yeah. But uh, ultimately, this one, holy shit, ended up Tazawa getting a victory, hard fought victory, uh, German, deadlift German suplex, dude. Yeah, but what you would led to that was a friggin' snap suplex on a guy. I've never seen a suplex so fast. Yeah, just boom. Yeah, that was uh, it was crazy, man. But uh, Tazawa gets the uh, the uh, the win, and then the uh, or Scott Hudson used to say gets the Duke. Gets the Duke. Yeah, that's funny. And then Larry Zabisco would tell him, "Stop saying that. It sounds like you're giving away my dog." <laughs> yeah. I want to see the bracket now. Let me let me see if I can go find. CWC bracket. That's what I want to see. Try to find an unspoilered version. Yeah, I'm going to the WWE cruiserweight bracket version here. Let's see here. WWE. Let's see. No, why are you giving me? Okay, full bracket revealed. Okay. 
click here to print your bracket. Oh, shit, I can print a bracket? Interesting. I want to see it. Damn it, why won't it give me the, the bracket? I don't see the damn picture. Why won't you give me the damn picture? Here's your weight classic. Um, looking, 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 looking. Why? It shouldn't. Be. I fucking hate the WWE website. It, they make it so damn hard to find the easiest thing. You should have one link right there. There it is. Fuck. No, this is the same one that I was just looking at, and they didn't have a way to print the damn thing. All right, all right, never mind. I got something here. So. You did? Yeah, I just looked up uh, Cruiserweight uh, Classic Bracket and opened up a photo. Oh, okay. Cool, that helps. Okay, so right now, I mean, where are we at? So we got... Well, Kenneth John... Well, here's the order of the matches, okay? Okay. And I'll give them to you and then we'll, as they go. And we'll... Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, Kenneth Johnson and Akira Tozawa. So Tozawa wins and advances. Yes. Uh, we haven't got to Jack Gallagher or Fabian or uh, Rick Mary yet. I think that's next week. Okay. Tajiri over Damian Slater. So Tajiri moves on. Alejandro Saez lost to Grand Metallic. So Tajiri against Grand Metallic. Yeah! Um, anyone thinking back to EC Dub? Holy shit, that's going to be fun. Seriously, dude. Like, if they just wrestled this match like any of the one match, any of the matches he had was super crazy. Damn, that's going to be fun. <laughs> seriously, look, let me just tell you, some of the best things that ever happened in ECW was the feud between Tajiri, Super Crazy, and Little Guido. Okay. And they just had some awesome friggin' matches. Uh, I think um, this match is going to be next week. Uh, I think it's hard. Shira, you might have to correct, uh, correct me on that. You're one of the Bollywood boys. I think you're right. Yes. Versus Drew Gulak. Dude, Drew Gulak is going to kill him. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Dude, Drew Gulak uh, is like, he's he's kind of like the modern day Iceman, dude. Uh -huh. But what I would like to see is maybe the Bollywood boys get a tag team champ in a, a, a tag team chance in the NXT. Yeah, that would be fun. This scene. Because I like those two. They got the right look, they got the right attitude, they have fun. Ew. And we have to replace the fun team that's going to leave soon. And it would definitely uh, suck yeah. for uh, Global Force, because the, right now I think they're the Global Force tag champs. Alpha. <laughs> so, we, ah, I still don't care. So, Alright, okay. next week we also have this match, which would uh, see the winner of these two matches facing each other, actually. Zack Sabre Jr. And Tyson Dukes. Jesus. Or that, Tyson Dukes. He'll never make it out of the first round. That's going to be a good match for a first round, though. That that could have been a semi-final. That could have been a final. Yeah. But I, I just feel bad for... He's a long-time veteran of this of fucking wrestling, man. I just feel bad for Drew Gulak. I wanted him to win, dude. <laughs> and you never know. Zach Sabre Jr. might not get that far. If well, Zach, I I think they're pitching Zack Saber Jr. to win the whole damn thing, but honestly, I think this might be a um uh, a, uh, a springboard for Rich Swan. That might be. You never know. We'll see. So let's. Uh, I mean, the man does a standing four fifty splash, and you can make fun of him all you want, but when you see that shit in person, yeah, it changes the way you think about someone. Yeah, okay. I was ripping on him to the point where he said. Oh, did that hurt? He looks at me and goes, God, I hate you. <laughs> I look back and say, we hate you too. And he looks right back at me like, the oh, fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, in the match, he won with a fucking standing 450. He jumps so high. He like leaps once, leaps twice, leaps three times. and just gets higher and higher and higher. And whoosh, ah. I was like, oh, I can't hate that. That's crazy. I mean, the dude's name Rich Swan, which I make fun of, but I can't hate that. Yeah. So, looks like we'll see what happens, but uh, Tyson Dukes is probably going to get beat by Saber. Most likely. That sucks. But it should be a fun match. Should be, yeah. That's a main event no matter what. What, what yeah, shows up. Yeah, Dar, which is the Scottish Israeli. Nice. <laughs> Versus uh, the other Shira brother. The other brother. Gerv. Brother. The one with the G? Yeah. Is that what he said? Yeah. Okay. It's a shame. I have a feeling like both of them are going to be fucking out of the series before yeah. the thing even starts. Yeah. Which sucks, because it looks like they... That's very surprising that Global Force let them be in this in general. 
Well, I bet you they probably don't have an official, like, contract. Yeah, where they can bounce around and do other things. So I have a feeling either something... Good if they, you know... Maybe you actually do pick up the Bollywood boys. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they might have something in their contract saying they can do other things because everybody's a free agent. People go to Ring of Honor, people go to PWG and appear on both shows, and nobody cares. I'm wondering if that's maybe something that they have in their contract with Global Force, and they didn't expect it to be a WWE thing. So, well, it was. So. All right. Uh, I forgot his first name, but Davari and Hoho Loon. Uh, 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 yeah, Araya, Araya Davari, something like that. Aria Davari, something like that. God, I hope they hire him. I know Sean Davari needs more work out, but damn, this dude wrestles so much better than him. Yeah, Ho Ho Loon, uh, I was shocked that he got that win, so. He, oh, man, I think it's because, you know, his background, it's a little bit, you know. Yeah, being again. to see him, uh, you know. Chinese wrestlers in such a fashion. Yeah, being the first real wrestler from Hong Kong to really start them, I mean, he started his own company out there because it was nothing. So, uh, Hong Kong Wrestling Federation. So, but good for so him. Now we got the other side of the bracket. Okay. Raul Mendoza versus Brian Kendrick, which will be the main event next week. Nice. Man, I can't wait to see uh, Kendrick break him to the apocalypse. Yeah, nice. Um. Another match for next week. Same bracket. So the winners are actually going to face each other on this one. Anthony Bennett versus Tony Nese. Ooh. Yeah, that's Tony Nese. Tony Nese. I like that guy. I like Tony Nese, too. Valdo hates him. Thinks he only has five moves. He might, but still. He's still a good he wrestler. Five man. moves. So. But according to, um, yeah, he might. This might be it. If he can't get anything out of this, he might be done in the business. Oh, man. Because he's never really accomplished much. He went to TNA for a little while for a cup of coffee and never accomplished anything. Yeah, that was... That, sucks. Well, that, that was that fucking money in my opinion. Yeah, because that was at the time when Hogan was there, I think, is when he was when he was there. You know, I, I really feel that TNA should drop the ball on so many guys. Well, uh, that's that's the hardest part. The hardest part with TNA is they've had so many different people in booking and management over the years that y- people get fallen through the cracks because of... Hogan being there, Bischoff being there, or... Dude, if you're calling the Grand Canyon a crack, we got problems. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excuse me. If I cough on air, I apologize. I'm, I'm getting over something, so... Oh, good. I'm probably going to catch something with all the people that work sick. A little fun. So. Yay! All right. This match, which was the maybe match... Oh, fuck. I just noted something. Huh. Uh, the first match had two people in the same bracket, and this just pissed me off now, because I know one of them's going to have to lose. Oh. It's probably the one I want to win. Oh, gosh. Kota Ibushi versus Sean Maluda, which was a fine match. Yeah. Kota Ibushi. And my match of the week last week, Cedric Alexander versus Clement Hitch. Oh, shit. So, Kota Bushi's going against Cedric Alexander. In the second fucking round! Oh, fuck. I didn't know that. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> oh, shit. Why? That should be a final. <laughs> Holy shit. That sucks. Oh, my God. I am so disappointed right now. God damn I'm it. I'm so excited as a pro wrestling fan. <laughs> But I really wanted Alexander to win this. You know what? Maybe. Here's here's an idea. 20-minute time limit draw. Advance them both the ne- the semifinals of three-way. No, they said that if they don't win, it's a, a draw. They're both out. Fuck. On the show. Fuck, fuck, fuck. There's no... There's no good ending to this. Damn it. Hey, uh, no. she wins, Alexander's out. Alexander wins, the bougie's out. Neither of them win, we're fucked. God damn it. The it, only thing that would... Uh, that would mean the winner between um, well, Kendrick, Raul, uh, Mendoza, and Bennett Nice would automatically advance. Well, here, here's here's my, my thought process, right? Maybe, maybe Kendrick... Again, Kendrick's a little sadistic at some times. What if they play out a storyline? Again, to where we get the triple threat. You get Kendrick, Alexander, 
and Ibushi in the semifinal. Because without having a draw, Kendrick comes out and attacks both men during the middle of their match. Just for the sake of just, he's a psychopath. He's just, he's just crazy. You know, that would be interesting if we weren't treating this tournament as a professional sports I know, tournament. I know. Damn it. I, uh, I can't believe I it. I can't believe it's they the did that. I noticed it, and it hurts. It hurts so much. I can't believe they did that. God damn it. Oh, fuck you, WWE. You're dead to me, Vince. You're dead to me. No, you're not. You're still. You're still bastard, nope. though. You're, you'll never die, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately for you. I mean, it depends. So, all right. Who else? Uh, okay. Bottom half. Very good match from last night. TJ Perkins and the Mac. Yeah. So Perkins moves on. Oh, God. The semifinals between them will be the winner of... Gargano and Oh, Ciampa. God. I knew you were going to say As soon as you pause, I'm like, oh, shit. I haven't heard Gargano and Ciampa yet. Uh, well, why? <laughs> oh shit! Why? Well, at least we that was gonna be fun. I have a feeling it's gonna end up being Gargano and and. Uh, I still just can't wait to see Gargano and Ciampa fuck each other up. God damn! Man, I just want to see. I just love the fact that Gargano and Ciampa are on the WWE Network under the NXT roster. Nice. It's like they're officially there. I'm just like. This makes me happy. Mm-hmm. This makes me very happy. God damn it, dude. That sucks. Oh, man. It's like the first half of the brackets. Ah, I can live with this. Second half. Fuck you. God damn it. There's so many good people on one side. Oh, this is not fair. And then you had Mustafa Ali and Lindsay Dorado, which was amazing. So Lindsay Dorado moved on. Yeah. He'll be facing the winner of Jason Lee and Rich Swan, so Rich. I can almost guarantee Dorado and Swan will be flying off against each other. Yeah, Jay, and you know what, Jason Lee, I, I probably said this a couple times already. Seen him wrestle on YouTube from the Hong Kong Wrestling Federation, the one that Ho Ho Loon uh, actually trained him. He's actually better than Ho Ho Loon. That's the scary part. <laughs> so, at least in my opinion, the match I watched them uh, face off against each other. I think Jason Lee wound up being the better the better wrestler. So, yeah, fun. God damn, dude. No, it's not fun. It's frustrating, but it's fun to watch, dude. You can't. You have to oh, admit that. God, I can't, uh, well, that's why we do the shows on Thursdays now. Yeah, we're taping everything a day late now. So, oh man, dude. That's, because of honestly, we just want to watch the CWC. Yes, that is for sure. That's basically it. Oh, I mean, man. until this is over, we'll be recording on Thursdays. Unless the CWC goes longer than my summer gig, and we'll just go on Wednesdays after the CWC. Yeah, something. We'll figure it all out. Shit. We'll go back to 10 o'clock once, you know, recording at 10 or 11, depending on how we feel, after uh, Watching my freaking morning job's over. Which I only have four and a half more weeks to go. Woohoo! Yay. Now, speaking of the CWC... You know, I would love to see them do something else like this. Maybe on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I don't even know about Monday Night Raw, but I just would love to see another tournament where they bring in guys who are not well known. Yeah, or women. I would be fine with a women's tournament as well if we start, like, you know, getting, like, even if it's just a 16 woman tournament. Or the, even make the Dusty Rhodes tournament, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament. Make that. Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic open to tag teams from around the globe. It was real interesting when all of a sudden Gargano and Ciampa went in there and won a round. Yeah, nobody thought they were going to win a round. Didn't they go to the semis? They upset. Who did they upset? Uh, was it Blake and Murphy or the uh, or the uh, the freaking uh, the fucking um. Well, they beat originally uh, Bull Dempsey, may he rest in. <laughs> Bull Dempsey and Tyler Breeze, right? Yes. That's, and then they upset, um, God, was it the, uh, the what's it called? The, uh, the Revival? Or was it Blake and Murphy? No, I thought they did, uh, shit. Because I know. Maybe it was the Ascension. Oh, it was the Ascension. Okay, maybe. 
Because the finals, who was the finals? It was Joe and, and Balor against whom? Joe Balor versus Corbin and Rhino, which was a big mistake because I think that would have been a perfect moment to have um, American Alpha go over Joe and Rhino. Uh, Rhino and, uh, um, and Corbin. Yeah, Corbin. that's right. Especially okay. since that was a better match than the main event. Okay. Yeah, I I'd forgotten who was who was there. I, I just I I knew we were a little upset about about uh, Alpha All right, not getting. So it. here's what happened. Oh, he found. I got the tournament in front of me. Uh, Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy beat Angelo Dawkins and Salt and Foyer. Okay. Balor and Joe beat the Lucha Dragons. Blake and Mama Murphy beat the uh, Lost to the Vaud Villains. Uh, Dash and Dawson beat Tucker Knight and Elias Sampson. <laughs> Before he became the drifter. Type Bros. Hard beat, uh, Noah Kakoa and Alexander Wolf. I think Wolf is still there doing stuff. I think he's got, like, a gimmick Noah, right now. He's doing a lot of house shows. Noah Kakoa is still there. He's, uh, he looks like an Asian, he's an Asian Hawaiian dude. Oh, dude, that's like the, uh, Asian Rock. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He kind of looks like the Asian. I see, like, like the Rock. Yeah, he, like 20 years ago. Yeah, he does. He does kind of look like him a little bit. All right, I am not upset by that. I think that's right, the same Jason guy. Jason Jordan and Chad Gable versus Neville and Solomon Crow. Yeah. Uh, I was actually very upset about this because I was like, oh, God, they're going to let Neville and Crow go over. I was so pissed. And I was like, oh, no, Alpha 1. I'm so happy right now. Yeah, and then, and then Neville then Neville got moved up. All right, yeah. R- Rhino and Corbin defeated the Ascension, and then Solomon Crow went elsewhere. Okay. Which sucks for me because I'm a huge Sammy Callahan fan. Uh, Tyler Breeze and Bull Dempsey lost to Gargano and Ciampa. Alright, so that means Balor and Joe beat Enzo and Kaz. Dash and Dawson beat the Vaude Villains. That was when they first started making a name for themselves. Okay. Like, they got into the fucking semifinals of the tournament and like, who the fuck are these two guys? And you and me were probably just sitting there going, oh yeah. <laughs> the Brain Busters are back. And yeah. we knew that shit right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jordan and Gable, of course, beat the Hype Bros. Rhino and uh, Corbin beat Gargano and Ciampa, which was actually a really good match. Okay, that's where we did. Okay, they did. So they did win one match in that tournament. It was only one. Yeah, it was a kind of a bullshit win, but no one expected that in general. So that was yeah the shocking part about it. Yeah, and then they went up against Rhino and Corbin and almost won. They actually got very close a few times. Yeah. Then we know Balor and Joe beat the Revival before they were the Revival. And uh, Rhino and Corbin beat Alpha before they were Alpha, and then Joe and Balor won the whole thing. Yeah, and freaking Joe then turned on uh, Balor. So, <laughs> yay! That's where the feud started, and now Joe is the champion, and Balor's on Raw. <laughs> yeah, they got a whole list of tournaments here. Yeah. Oh, what? Uh, wait, what? Yeah, and if I went too far, I would have saw the WC, WWE Cruiserweight Classic tournament results, and I would have been really pissed. Oh, good. Thank God. Yeah, but they like they got the uh, the recent uh, Tag Team Championship number one contender tournament. Okay. Which saw the Usos versus the Social Outcast. Yeah. Uh, Gold Dango versus the Vaude Villains. Enzo and Kaz versus the Ascension, and the Dudley Boys versus the Lucha Dragons, and then saw the Vaude Villains and Enzo and Kaz. No, attempt to wrestle. <laughs> Enzo, Enzo got killed. He nearly died in the ring. Yeah. If I had a, if I had a dime. The thing that I loved about that, now that I know that Enzo's okay and I can talk about this in a good way, was how the friggin' um, New Day were so happy about this. They're sitting there right in the corner, right where it happened. They're sitting there, they're eating popcorn, they're drinking soda, they got pizza. And then three minutes into the match, this shit happens, and everyone just went stone faced. Yeah. And then Enzo basically says, "Enzo's crying. I think friggin' um, not Enzo. Cassidy's crying. Enzo's not moving. Enzo's dead." Yeah. Well, but like he's unconscious with his eyes open. Yeah. And then about a month later, Enzo says, "If I had a dime for every time I didn't get back up, I'd have zero times." <laughs> I just found it hilarious. I was waiting for freaking um, Xavier Woods to start weeping openly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's how sad he was. Yeah, that was... Yeah. But it was definitely a scary fucking moment because you're trying to figure out what happened. Like, did he pull a fucking uh, Peril Aquilar Jr.? It was crazy because he... It looked like he was 
<laughs> want, they wanted to toss him head first, and he changed his mind midway and then and tried to gonna do a slide under. Slide under. Yeah. Standing on doing. They were just too close to the ropes, and when he went there, his head literally hit the middle rope and got slammed because you know there's so there's only so much give there. Yeah. You know, it sprung him literally like a bullet into the friggin' mat at first. Yeah. Eesh. So that advanced the Vaude villains, yeah. And then uh, the Dudleys were on the other side against uh, who the hell was it? Uh, the Vaude no. Who's on the other side? Well, when he was injured, uh, the Dudleys and the Vaughn Villains teamed up together against uh, the New Day and Taz in what was an amazing eight-man tag that went three segments on Raw. Oh, yeah, that's right. And not only that, though, it went three segments on Raw, and it had Bubba Ray being Bully Ray the whole way through. You see what you do? You pick him up! And then you cross face him. Yeah. And then you pick him up again, and you cross face him again. Yeah, yeah, man. I that's I was a little miffed that uh, they didn't just take him and uh, up for uh, the draft and, and not the Dudley Boys and as a combo because I want to see Bubba get a singles run. Give it time. I don't think Devon's got much more in him. Uh, we shall see. But yeah, just speaking oh, about... Oh, shit. This is really happening. Hmm. Remember when they made the zombie uh, pictures? Yes. For the WWE superstars? Yes. Well, they're turning them into action figures. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's fucking weird looking. Like, Triple H has got his stupid crown and skull and nothing else on his head. You know, Undertaker's got weird purple flames and bloody arms. Batista looks like Drax. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really change much. Yeah, that's funny. Someone's missing an arm. Shoot. Um, Paige actually looks better. <laughs> she actually has a tan. It's kind of weird. So, uh, okay. With the uh, the draft this past week and SmackDown Live, I hate the fact that they just put that word in there, so now they have to say SmackDown Live every single fucking time. Um... Uh, WWE draft results. Let me see here. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least, uh, give you the list of who's on what. So, first few picks. Let me, let me just go through here. First selection on each show, obviously you knew it was gonna be Rollins and Ambrose. One, two, either way. Yeah, that only makes sense. You know it was gonna be those two. Um, the next few selections, Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte goes to Raw, AJ Styles to SmackDown, and Finn Balor gets called up to Raw from NXT. Holy shit. That was awesome. And it was crazy because I wasn't watching live at the time because I don't get the East Coast speed. And I get a phone call from our good buddy, The Boobs. And he goes, dude, are you watching this? And I go, no, I don't get that feed. He goes, dude, the, the fifth pick is hella demonic. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I hate you. <laughs> I'm like, I knew, ba- I knew Balor was going to get drafted. But I'm like, oh, man, that high, really? Okay. Well, you knew something like that would happen. So, and then the second round was complete and utter trash. Uh, Roman Reigns, John Cena goes to SmackDown. Brock Lesnar, which I didn't think he was going to get drafted, period, because whatever. Um, Randy Orton goes to SmackDown, and the New Day as a team goes to Raw. Which kind of disappointed me, because I really want to see Big E go out on his own. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, then next up, uh, we had Sami Zayn. Uh, it was Ron Raw, Bray Wyatt, Sasha Banks going uh, to uh, Raw, which is upsetting. And I've been talking to Aaron, and he's really, he's actually really pissed off about that because Sasha, her idol is Eddie Guerrero, and Eddie Guerrero was a staple on SmackDown, and she wanted to go there as well. So it's unfortunate. Uh, but Becky Lynch made it to uh, SmackDown, and Chris Jericho is on Raw. Okay. Good riddance. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, like right now, if it wasn't for 
wasn't for the women, I wouldn't be watching Raw. Yeah. Uh, Not many picks that make me go, ooh. Yeah. And let's see here. Uh, the 16th overall pick was for Raw. That's the United States champion, Rusev and Lana. Uh, then uh, Daniel Bryan. You just have to watch Raw. Yeah. And then Daniel Bryan basically said, fuck, I hate to have to do this, but I'm, we need the IC title, so I'm picking the <laughs> miss. That was fucking great, dude. That was one of the funniest things I've heard in that whole show. With Daniel Bryan, I was like, damn it, I don't want to do this. Um and then uh, Kevin Owens finally went, which I think he got drafted way too low. Uh, he's a- I agree. I think uh, Owens should have been a top ten. I love the fact that when he was coming out for his match, he was pretty much telling them that. Yeah, why haven't you picked me yet? What the fuck? Uh, 19 uh, going to SmackDown is Baron Corbin. Uh, and then number 20 pick was uh, Enzo and Cass going to Raw. Which is great. Yeah, they're really getting some tag teams on for there. Yeah, and then uh, follow that up the next round. 21st pick was uh, the club members, again, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, twenty two raw. Two raw. 22 is the call-up from NXT for American Alpha. Holy. Oh, God, did you hear that pop? Yes, dude, it was great. A team that has never wrestled on the main roster got a full arena pop. In Massachusetts. Yeah, dude, it was great. I was happy for them. And you know what? I'm a, I'm a little miffed at some of the people on the internet. And it's funny because somebody – apparently there's there's at least one person who uh, basically got put on blast on the internet. It was great because somebody made a meme out of his tweet. And it said, who the fuck are these two guys? Blah, 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 blah. And then – they just put completely just went all off trolling this dude for a while. And someone made a meme over it, uh, putting the tweet dead center and then like a bunch of pictures of WWE superstars from over the years face palming. It was great. Fucking hilarious. Um, let's see. 23 Raw's on, uh, got the big show. 24 Dolph Ziggler going to SmackDown. And tw- oh! 25, the surprise pick from NXT, Nia Jax. I'm very surprised by this, but I think it can work. Oh, I think it can, too. I just, I, I'll... And I just want to point out that Hart and Bailey wrestled again last night. Well, yeah. Well, not last night, last night, but the episode that they wrestled on... This week. Last this... night, and it could have been match of the night. Yeah. Uh, and I'm... Yeah, so the amount of... Progression Jax has made in the short time she's been on the main NXT roster is really impressive. Yeah, and and I'll once once we get through the list, I'll I'll go back and and, and speak my piece when it comes to Nia Jax and a couple other things. Um, Neville uh, went to Raw. He's returning from injury at twenty six. Yes, I'm very happy that no one forgot about it. Yeah, uh, Natalia at twenty seven going to SmackDown. Cesaro at number twenty eight. Okay. And wait till we talk about what, how his response is. Yeah, to afterwards. 29, Alberto Del Rio. Sheamus at number 30. Uh, that was the cutoff. That was the end of the, main, that was the, uh, end of the television m- show draft. Correct. So, uh, and then from there, they kept uh, basically kind of alternating again. Same thing, but they did it on the uh, draft center on the WWE Network. Uh, Which I actually really – I didn't watch the first two hours. Because I only watching. watched the hour that followed after SmackDown. I didn't watch anything else. Exactly. But yeah. from what I saw, was real interesting. It was definitely a cool little show, which is, I mean, for them to analyze things. Uh, 31 was the Golden Truth. Thirty uh, They're on Raw. The Usos are 32. They go into SmackDown. Which, at least I want to see them against American Alpha, so I'm looking forward to that, yeah. actually. Uh, Titus O'Neil's on Raw at 33. Kane's going to SmackDown at number 34. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got uh, Paige at 35 going to Raw. Again, end of, end of that round. Uh, Raw gets another pick here. 36 is Darren Young with Bob Backlund. Interesting. 37, Kalisto by himself going to SmackDown, followed up by Sin Cara being taken for Raw at 38. And, uh, very interesting, actually. Yeah, so there's there's a split there. That's the first split we've had so far. Uh, Naomi at 39 going to SmackDown. Number 40 is uh, Jack Swagger. Which somehow still has a on, job. On Raw. And 41, The Ascension. Nice. I like that. 41. Where are they going? They're going to SmackDown? They're going to SmackDown. That's actually really good. 
So, because they might now... Finally, first of all, welcome back, uh, Connor. Yeah, and I think this is going to be good for them, because they'll finally at least get a chance and not be jobbers. So, that's that's what I like about that whole situation. Uh, 42, the Dudleys are on Raw. 43, Zack Ryder is going to SmackDown. I'm very happy about that. 44. And you'll know why very soon. 44 is Summer Rae going to Raw. 45, Apollo Crews gets his chance on SmackDown. This is actually very good. 46. So I think this will be a place where he can thrive. Yeah. Especially if they put him in a feud with someone like AJ Styles. Yeah, that would be fun to see how that goes. Uh, 46, Mark Henry is on Raw. 47, we got another call up from NXT. That would be Alexa Bliss. Which is awesome, dude. She she's gonna have some some good matches there with oh, Natalia I'm and so happy about that. and uh, Becky Lynch there too. Um, let's see, forty eight Braun Strowman getting separated uh, getting separated from uh, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. So, uh, forty nine Brizongo was on SmackDown. Uh, fifty Bo Dallas. So, Without the rest of the social outcasts. Yeah, so, so far he's the uh, he's the first one taken, or you know, take that back. He's, yeah, he's the first one taken so far of those guys. Uh, Fifty one, Eva Marie, which and I thought she was uh, wasting an NXT slot, but thankfully that wasn't the case. Yeah, so which is funny because somebody made a graphic that said Eva Marie drafted to Pornhub. I thought that was kind of funny. So eh, <laughs> or Pornhub, yeah. So, uh, 52, The Shining Stars, which I think they should just disappear. Um, See, that's the problem. They're a really good team. They'd be better suited for SmackDown. Wait, are they on SmackDown? No, they're on Raw. See, that's the problem. They'd yeah. be better suited for SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, fi- 53, The Vaude Villains are on SmackDown. 54, Alicia Fox on Raw. 55, Eric Rowan is on SmackDown. So Rowan and well, at least him and Bray Wyatt can stay together. Yeah, him and Bray are on the same team. Strowman's on a completely other show now. Uh, 50, Which I guess they have a lot of faith in Strowman. Maybe fifty six. Dana Brooke is uh, still with Charlotte. Fifty seven from NXT. Another call up. Mojo Rowley. And here's why I'm very happy about that. We're going to get some hype bros. Hype bros coming together on the main roster, which is cool. I really hope that they put them as a tag team, because I think it would be real interesting to see them on the roster with that. Yeah. And then uh, 58, Curtis Axel. And 59 from NXT, another call-up, Carmella. F-A-B-A-L-O-U-S. And a lot of people are pissed that she's not on Raw. Yeah, because she's not with the end zone cast. But you know what? Let's see how she shines on her own. Fabulous. So, um, so yeah, that's that was the end of the trap. Now, the funniest part is we mentioned two of the three uh, social outcasts, and um, Heath Slater didn't get picked. Yeah, but if you notice, a lot of people with injuries didn't get picked. Yeah, so, but it was just funny. They made it a whole big old deal. Like, what the hell? Like, I'm a free agent. Cool. <laughs> I know that that. That'd be hilarious if he actually shows up in like a friggin' evolve show when he's healthy. Yeah, so here's here's the deal. Um my main thing if you're looking at this as an as a draft, that this is the reason why I hate the word draft for this. Because when I think of draft, I'm a sports guy as well. I watch football. Um And I understand that you have to pick people who are the best need for your team or you pick the best player available. Wrestling's a different boat. You would think you take the best person available every time, right? Naturally. So when in the pre-show to this, you got um, Corey Graves and Booker T and Lita and uh, what's her name? Um, Oh, my God. What's the chick's name, the announcer chick? Um, Renee. There you go. Um, they're hyping up Samoa Joe, and Nakamura, and Bailey in the pre-show, and none of them get picked when you know that those two guys are better than Mojo Raleigh. Those two guys are better than half the damn roster. And Bailey is basically, I mean, albeit she's not the champion anymore, she's still the number one person 
one A or one B with Asuka on that roster, I don't understand why Carmella, who's her best friend, who hasn't even barely even gotten a title, hadn't even gotten a title match yet, goes to Ford. Nia Jax, I can understand maybe. You're taking a you're taking a leap of faith on that one, but. Carmella's a reach, dude. Like, if that would be considered a reach in in a, in a regular draft, but if you're looking at it from like a sports perspective, that's what perplexes me. Is why would you hype up these guys in the pre-show and then have them not get drafted? I agree with you with that. Um, I feel with Bailey though, she'll still be up here. Oh yeah, I know she, she better be there this weekend, dude, at the pay per view because Sasha Banks needs a tag team partner. And, better than the huggable one. Yeah, why not? I mean, they they put on a hell of a match, hell of two hell of a ma- good matches, um, at the uh, your Brooklyn, and then the uh, the following uh, the following NXT special takeover special. So, uh, but yeah, I just it kind of it kind of bothered me, um, kind of bothered me that they were doing that. I mean, I I really. I know I probably shouldn't let it bother me, but it does. It kind of just – it kind of chafes me the wrong way there just to – Well, it does make you sit there and go, why wouldn't they pick Joe? Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck doesn't want Samoa Joe on their roster? That would have been my number one. Or Austin Aries or Bobby Roode or Nakamura. Uh, I mean, hell, I'd take Elias Sampson over freaking Mojo Rowley. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I don't like Mojo Rowley, dude. He's like, seriously – he reminds me, he's like, if John Cena and the Ultimate Warrior somehow were able to produce an offspring and they injected crack cocaine in it to like, or, or not crack cocaine, speed <laughs> into the child and it just grew up like super hyper all the time. Like that's Mojo Rally to me. I don't know. I just don't. Because you ain't hype. I don't like Mojo Rally, dude. I really, you ain't hype. Yeah, so. But um, also, too, there's some announcer changes. Unfortunately for us, Corey Graves, I don't know if this means he's not going to be on NXT anymore. Oh, God, that would suck so much. But he's now on the Raw announced desk with Byron Saxton and Michael Cole. SmackDown is going to be Mauro Ronaldo, JBL, and the King gets the axe for David Otunga. Which I am not upset with at all. Wow, I, I was kind of shocked. Hey, Otunga had one or two episodes, and he was pretty good on them. Yeah, I, I was just rather shocked, though. And I, I'm not surprised JBL's on SmackDown now, because JBL has always been a SmackDown guy. He's always said SmackDown is the A show. He's always said that when he was back there being the champion on that show. So, well, when he was announcing for uh, there for, for so years. long. Yeah, JBL is a SmackDown guy through and through. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but, dude, Corey Graves. I'm, I'm glad for Corey Graves, man. That guy has come a long way since his injuries, all of his concussions that took him out of the ring, and he has honed his craft, and he is one of the best right now in the business. Uh, so good for him. I just am afraid how NXT is going to suffer without him if he's not going to be there. So that's my biggest worry. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Well, they still have what, Tom? Tom Phillips, uh, and you know what? Um, from what it sounds like, he's also going to be announcing uh, the two minor shows. He's he's getting moved up as well, so they may even have a whole new crew down there. Because he's going to do superstars with Otunga and uh, and the main event with main event with Graves. Graves. So they may have a whole new crew here at the next set of tapings for NXT. Maybe if that means Albert's coming back. Either that or maybe Alex Riley took some meds <laughs> and they bringing him back. Ah, he was shit can, dude. I know he was. Yeah, I don't know who they would put over there then. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe. Dr. is going to do the announcing. <laughs> well, Daniel Bryan's on Raw, so it can't be Daniel Bryan over there. I'm trying to think of who Actually, else. He's on SmackDown. Well, sorry. Yeah, he came up to the, the, the Raws for the other day, but yeah, so he is the general manager of SmackDown. My bad. Um,. Yeah, I don't know who they're they're gonna put up there. Maybe maybe Renee. Uh, maybe I mean maybe bring her back to do it. I don't know. Like she's traveling. I kind of like her as an announcer. I kind of I like her as the uh, um uh, the, color analyst before the show. Yeah. Because I actually love watching the pre shows for the pay per views. Yeah, I'm trying to think who they have there. I mean, right now they have. I mean, they have announcers, they have backstage people, but 
like ring announcers, but they don't have like really anybody there unless I mean I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of like I mean Re- William Regal is is the 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 commissioner. He could step up and be color analyst too. I, I mean he's done it before. Um, I don't know, dude. I, I'm I'm lost. If that's the case, I don't know who who they bring in. Yeah, that's the scary part. Um, yeah, dude. We're we're also gonna see um with this uh, draft they announced that the cruiserweight division is going to be on Raw. So with the cruiserweight uh, classic um taking place right now, there's gonna be a lot of those guys. Or you'll see them on Raw soon enough. Um, oh, we hope. Yeah. We hope. And then also, um, I don't know what's going to happen with title belts. Because right now... Yeah, so I'm going to explain how this works. Because Dean Ambrose still holds the title going into this weekend, in the, the Battleground pay-per-view. If Dean Ambrose loses the belt, it's going from SmackDown to Raw. Um, which, my hunch, is going to happen. I don't care. who. It's probably going to be Rollins. But um, that's my hunch is that main title's got to be on Raw. I'm sorry. That's that's your flagship belt, your flagship show. That's on Raw. Um, so then from there, do they create another world title? Um, question mark? Do you think that's going to happen? I do. Okay. I don't know how or when, but I do. So something like that's probably going to happen soon enough. The women's title is technically on Raw. Um, right now, uh, tag team titles. Who's who's got those belts right now? The New Day. They're on okay. Raw. Raw. So, but they're and they're not. They're against the Wyatt this weekend. Is it a tag team title match? I don't know. I mean, because if it's a title match, I don't I, think so. Because it's a six man match. <laughs> Hmm. Because that would be pretty funny. Because then the tag team titles can go over with Bray and Rowan, and Strowman gets fucked out of out of that title. Because Strowman's on Raw. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. So you got the 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 women's title for sure. You have the tag team titles right now. Um, and then you're gonna have the cruiserweight title on Raw. More than likely, the WWE World Title is going to be on Raw after this weekend. That's my hunch. Again, me fantasy booking. So the only and the US titles on Raw. So the only belt that's on SmackDown right now, officially, maybe after this weekend, is the IC title. And I don't think that's going to stay on there either. I think they're going to pull a double switch. So because US titles always kind of been a, like a SmackDown. SmackDown title. So Rusev's facing who? This weekend, he's facing Ryder. Ryder. Ryder's on SmackDown. And, okay. Uh, yes, and uh, Miz is fighting. Smack Miz is fighting Young, who's on Raw. Okay, so yeah, they can pull the switch. Okay, I can see that. But then, yeah, then then where from there? I mean, uh, do you have one fucking belt on SmackDown? Nah, uh, they're gonna have to make a new world title. Yeah, they're gonna have to. And then again, I feel bad for the women's division on SmackDown. So then, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna um, like have them float between both shows? The like champion float between both shows? Then I don't know how that works. Yeah, that's <sighs> it. Just hasn't been explained enough because they probably don't even know. Yeah, probably. And again, in the past, we had um, it would be like the co-branded shows would be. Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and then like one month it would be Raw Presents, and then the next odd month would be a SmackDown Presents. Is Or is everything going to be co-branded? That's that's the main thing. So, um, yeah, kind of crazy. I had to think about this stuff. So, and WWE probably has no fucking clue what they're doing. <laughs> if we know anything, WWE doesn't really know anything. So, god damn, man. It's a good time to be a wrestling fan, though. That is for damn sure. Oh, damn, Skippy it is. And, uh, dude, Lucha Underground, Ultima Lucha, Dos, the Night 3 did not disappoint either. Don't. I'm not going to spoil anything, dude. It was damn good. Damn good. So fucking behind. I have no time to catch up. Yeah, like, by the end of summer, I might watch, like, the last month. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got you got to catch up on it, dude. Like the whole the whole show, the all four hours of it, and two episodes previous that were hour each, and this one was a double episode for two hours. Um, I know, and I want to watch it, but I don't have time. Well, sacrifice reading comics for an hour just to watch at least one of them. Are you kidding me? I don't even read those right now. Shoot. Oh man, <sighs> craziness, 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 craziness. Shoot. So, but yeah, definitely. If you're a fan out there listening to us here, and you haven't watched Lucha Underground yet, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, like any Lucha Underground, if you do not know what Lucha Underground is, and you're listening to us, why haven't you watched it yet? Seriously, like we've been talking about this for so damn long. Yeah, we only tout it every chance we get. Yeah, basically. So, uh, yeah, make sure you go watch Lucha Underground. Um, shit. What the hell else is going on in the world? Ah, oh, man. The clusterfuck of the uh, RNC. I know we don't talk politics, but that's been a clusterfuck this week. <laughs> it's been in the news yeah, a lot. No, even. no it's, it, it's been fun to, to see all the crap that's been going on. And next week is a, even just as big of a clusterfuck in the, uh, the DNC. But we're getting to a point where it's, it's going to be uh, Trump and Clinton. So pick your lesser of two evils out of those two. Uh, I know. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, Again, since this has just happened last night for me, programming note for Scott since, hey, Scott, you, I have you on the line here. Um, we might not have a show next week because I will be in Texas. Uh, Going to go visit my sister out in Texas and go take a look at a house, a couple houses. Yeah, so, sure, sure. Houses, right. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so I don't know. We might probably not have a show next week, so we'll have, like, an extra jam-packed, show the following week talking about two weeks worth of the cruiserweight classic so uh, it's gonna be fun uh, oh shit. what did you think of claudio's uh claudio oh, cesaro's dude, uh speech that shoot I, I don't know if that sounded like a shoot to me it very much sounded like a shoot like why did i go so low why did i not is it because is it because i have i, I sometimes stumble over words I speak five languages. I'm allowed to screw up. Yeah. Well, and then on top of that, saying I didn't even want to go to Raw. I wanted to go to SmackDown because they value in-ring competition, and I don't have to deal with Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley arguing and, and then making it about them and not the superstars. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of special. Yeah, I, I like that. Did you see the stats on the side? No, I didn't. They said he started in WWE in 1999 in the stats. I was looking for that. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, are you serious? What? The, what? Unless. I mean, I be like, did he wrestle a dark match or something? And he just like had a really long career of not doing anything. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to remember like, cause he did have a chime where he was in OVW for a year and then they let him go and they brought him back. But that was in the mid two thousands, like mid to late two thousands. Maybe they meant two thousand and nine. Uh, probably, quite possibly, more than God likely. Damn, he's been there that long. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it does because he's been yeah. Yeah, he still has like uh, he goes out there and he has great matches every time. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean. Um, Shit, man, how often can you watch him and Sheamus beat the crap out of each other and not be bored? Yeah, well, and then, again, it's been well over a year now since we saw Cesaro and Sami Zayn in NXT tear their house down at the first takeover. Uh, it's been a few years now. It's been more, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, yeah, at least, at least, it's been over two years. Has it been over two years? Jesus. Yeah. God damn. It was back in, like, February of 2014. God damn. Yeah, because the network's been on for at least two years, right? More. It's been more. Oh, fuck, man. Time flies. It's hard to get keep things straight. Holy shit, man. Yeah, man. We, we've been enjoying this for a good long while. Damn it. You mean to tell me I've, been, I've given the WWE over $250 total in the last two years at least? Yes. Damn it. <laughs> Crazy. Dude, I've given them plenty more than that thanks to their DVD. Yeah, that yeah, look at my shelf here. Yeah. <laughs> they they've they've gotten all they need from me. But uh yeah, man, holy shit. I can't believe that. That's hilarious. 
But yeah, dude, Cesaro should have gone higher. Like again, if you're going based on talent, on talent alone, like I said Nakamura, Joe, Austin Aries, Bobby Roode, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens should have been up there. Bailey should have been up there. Hi, I John mean Cena still. John Cena should. I mean Rollins and Reigns and Ambrose. Yeah, they're they're your talents. I get it. But like like I said, a Mojo Rally, I'm sorry. A uh, uh, Bo Dallas ain't doing shit. Axel ain't doing shit right now. The Shining Stars not doing shit. Like that's the thing that bothers me the most is these guys that are absolute nothing burgers right now. Well, it's not even that. It's that they had a limited amount of call ups from uh, NXT and they wasted it on friggin' Mojo Rally. Yeah. And as much as I like our Carmelo. Yeah. I I mean, honestly, she's – I don't think she's ready, dude. I really don't. I haven't seen enough from her to say that she's ready for Raw. I would definitely pick uh, Nia Jax over her easily. Oh, yeah, by by all means. Um, But, man, like I'm just – my worry here in the next – No, I'd pick Peyton Royce over her. See, my, my worry in the next few weeks, in the next few months even – um, if Bailey gets called up this weekend to be the partner for Sasha, that leaves her and Oscar have to do her ma- their match at uh, I think it's the the SummerSlam um, to uh, the Takeover Brooklyn back to Brooklyn right their rematch. They're doing one. I think I thought that they were talking about doing that. I mean, I wouldn't be upset with that because more Sasha Bailey is good. No, 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 not Sasha Oscar. Oh. Yeah, I thought that's what well, they. Just because she comes up doesn't mean she can't wrestle. Remember, true. Sasha was NXT uh, Women's Champion at the time. True, true. So, but then and after she lost the title at Brooklyn a few weeks later. So okay, so then, but after that, the NXT Women's Division is basically depleted. I mean, it's Oscar, and then they have to start building up Liv Morgan, Peyton Royce, Di- uh, uh, Diana uh, Perazzo. Finally, debut. Huh. Amber Moon finally debut. Amber Moon, that's uh, for uh, Athena. Athena, yeah, for everybody out there. Um, yeah, so they have to start building up these girls now, like absolutely now, so that by the time Back to Brooklyn is done, one of these girls is a standout to possibly be the next number one contender. I think Billy Kay or Peyton Royce can be done if they just let them, you know, stop jobbing and give them some actual or, story. Hell, dude. I mean, I know she's jobbed a couple of times. But uh, freaking uh, the daughter of uh, the horseman. Yeah, Tessa Blanchard. Freaking A, dude. I mean, she's, she's good. not even signed. Yeah, that's the sad part. Even freaking Blue Pant, leave a base. Dude, sign her. God, it just, it's irritating, dude. When they, they, they're doing that, they're depleting the, the roster without having a backup plan yet. Uh-huh. And then on the guy's side. That's why I'm glad Joe and Nakamura and, you know, a few others haven't. But at, le- but at least on the guy's side, there's depth. Not as much as we think. I mean, I... There's I, a lot of no-names wrestling at house shows. A freaking Patrick Clark finally debuted. That was funny, yeah. God, those tights. <laughs> I was waiting for fireworks to come out of his ass. Yeah, how kind of awesome is that, that Patrick Clark, the guy who didn't win Tough Enough, debuted before the actual winners of Tough Enough? I'm very happy with that because he was the obvious uh, choice for the show. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of awesome. So, uh, also, I love the fact that No Way Jose came out and there's not a fucking smile on his face when he's kicking Aries' ass. Yeah, yeah, I still... This is what, this is what they should do instead of just having a guy come out. And playing a fucking gimmick for like a month and a half, go straight to a feud. Yeah, I, I just, I don't like No Way Jose. I just, I'm not, I wasn't fond of him before. I mean, you can, you can tell a lot from somebody if they can take an ass whooping, and that's why a lot of these guys who are jobbers, they, they make the ass whooping look good. Then sure, cool. They at least know what it should be like when they're winning. Um. But when he was Levis, Levis Valenzuela Jr., mm-hmm. nothing he, – he did nothing for me. And then all of a sudden he comes out as No Way Jose, and I'm like, okay, yes, it's catchy. Yes, it's a gimmick. But what's he doing? I mean, it, it really – nothing. And, and you bring that gimmick up to the main roster, and we've seen what happens. Fandango happens. Start with. This is something they have to evolve. But let's see where he goes with it. Because I think he's going to be 
pulled up anytime but, soon. But they haven't evolved Fondango. They haven't evolved Tyler Breeze. And well, Tyler Breeze, I think, would be fine the way he is if they just let him fucking wrestle. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Though. That's the problem with Tyler Breeze. But when they they've done gimmicks like this in the past, where it's been something, I mean, like again, you're uh, this is almost classic. Well, this guy's got Johnny Curtis a lot of credit. He yeah. still has a fucking job. That's true. But it's it's okay. this is like classic eighties. From how many companies a long time ago? Yeah. This, but this is like classic eighties though, dude. Like WWE sticks a guy with a gimmick, and then the guy can't get over because he's known as this dancer gimmick, or he's known as the freaking janitor, he's known as the fucking uh, the only one that I can think of that really got over was the fucking hog farmers, the Godwins. Really, off the top. Awesome. Yeah, the, hey, 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 the Smoking Guns did pretty well for a while. Yeah, but then eventually they had to change and as well, too. And that's when that's when I think they got over more was when when Billy Billy got over because he he became the Shawn Michaels of the group and Bart Gunn got knocked out by Butterbean. So. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, but let's be honest. Billy never got over outside of uh, DX and uh, the Smoking Guns. Billy and Chuck. Uh, Billy and Chuck. Yeah. So. Can't deny Billy and Chuck was fucking awesome. Yeah. They were so much fun. And then when they got to the wedding, it's like, Rico, Rico, Tim, we're going too far. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah, that was... That was all... It was like a 20-minute segment just for a three-minute morning run-in. Yeah. And then uh, er Eric... Are you fucking kidding me? This is how it ends? I was going to say, Eric Bischoff was the minister all in uh, face prosthetic. Oh, I was dying... After that, it was the funniest fucking thing to experience at that time. Yeah. So, and WWE was really the first people to tackle the gay marriage issue. So, just not the way everyone thought it would happen. Yeah. Every single wedding ends in a fight. So. <laughs> That it, shit was fucking hilarious. The only so, wedding I think on WWE television that didn't end in a fight officially was the the drive through wedding with Triple H and Stephanie when she was all passed out. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, um, the match made in heaven wedding. Oh, okay. Stephanie and Liz. Okay, yeah, so that's... They divorced. That's old school, yeah. <laughs> Shoot, remember when it was uh, um, Dawn Marie married Tori Wilson's dad? And then he dropped dead during the honeymoon? Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, was being recorded. Yeah, and then afterwards, they, she was like the grieving widow and the stepmom stepdaughter feud. Uh, then she got knocked up and fired. That's funny. Oh man, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's funny to go back and watch this old stuff on the network. Seriously, like I missed a lot of stuff in the 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 invasion era from I mean two thousand one, late two thousand one, two thousand early two thousand two to about two thousand five. I missed a lot of it um, because that was when I was finishing up high school and getting into college. So I didn't watch as much. Plus, I was also dating more. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't really get to watch wrestling considering I had a girlfriend that didn't like wrestling. That's what sucked. Um, therein is like the freaking uh, – uh, what was it? the uh, In uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, what they call it, the unicorn? The uh, Eleanor, the Eleanor of, of that, finding a chick who actually likes wrestling. <laughs> that it might be a little bit easier now. Nowadays might be, yeah, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, dude. At this point, I'm just taking a chick. She can hate wrestling. She's like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out on Thursdays, Fridays. Yeah, as long as... Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturdays are your days. <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I need them. Yeah, that's, yeah. Find the person that completes your crazy and, and weirdness. That's that's my motto. Oh, man. All right. Well, okay. When does Suicide Squad come out? Is that this week or next week? August 5th, I think. Okay, so that's in a couple weeks. That one's coming out. Actually, the more and more I see it, the more and more I uh, the the commercials I want to go see it more in the theater. Oh God, I'm trying. To, my friends even like starting to go. I might want to see that. And it does and have. I'm like, dude, I don't even like the Suicide Squad, and I want to fucking see well, this. It has that. I don't like Harley Quinn. We gotta go see this. It has that feel of the old school '80s Batman to me. To it, just for the. Oh, 
Well, uh, for some reason I'm on Craigslist because I'm bored. <laughs> well, not bored, but I need to, like, visually occupy myself while I'm on the show. Yeah. And, uh, someone's giving away free baby crayfish. What? Yeah, uh, baby crayfish up for grabs. Must have the appropriate tank set up to attain them. Nice. I'm not trying to give them away to die. Email me ASAP. That's funny. That's pretty funny. And it's literally a picture of two baby crayfish on, like, a fucking PVC pipe, you know, fish tank. That's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Shoot, man. Whoa, 60 empty Earth Best baby jars, four ounces. Like baby food See, jars? Yeah. That's a cool, that'd be a cool art project. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Actually, this would like, actually be Dude, a good idea for work. You know what I have? Actually, I have sitting right next to me in my desk here from back when I was working with the Indie Fed. I have a box, and I think it's still almost completely full. I probably have 100 DVD cases empty that I was sitting there thinking, huh, what can I do with those things and make like some sort of like pixel art wall installation, put like a certain color in the sleeve and then stack them next to each other or something and mount them on a wall. I don't know. Something like that. That could be interesting. Definitely. Look, someone's giving away free hydrochloric acid at one point. <laughs> really? We got 100 ounces left out of a 128 ounce jar. Wow, okay. Yeah, dude, what, what am I... Apple Cider Slam Healthy Sense, Relax and Sleep. Look at 24 cases, not expired, not an open. One box expires October, the other one January uh, 2017. They are not by the curb anymore. Someone took them. Enjoy. Interesting. No, not interesting. That's kind of frightening. Here, pills! That's fun. Oh, man. Yeah, there, you can find some crazy, stupid shit on Craigslist. Let, let's see. Let, let's see how it. Yeah, cra- I, oh, I found like uh, far too many comic books that I took home one day. Yeah. Well, let's free soil and dirt. Let's see. Let's see what's on Craigslist in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> For is that that's under near your freebie section, right? Yeah, it goes to the free section. Let's see. Free. Free Mad Max motion picture movie poster. Wait, what? I'll look that one up. Not the baby crayfish. Ha <laughs> ha. Somebody put up a post about DUI checkpoints in the free stuff. <laughs> Avoid the DUI checkpoint. That's actually a good way of getting that shit over. That's pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Oh, shit. Somebody's got an Atari 2600 and a bunch of games for free. Dude, get that. It's in Russian Hill. Ugh. Ah! I have one. I actually have an Atari 2600 that works. I sold one. I want one. Please go get it. It's in fucking San Francisco. I will fucking give you money. Not a lot, but something. <laughs> uh, I'll your guess. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's see. Let's see what else they got here. I, I have the window saved open, so let's see. What else? What else? What else? Anything good? Oh, God. Why people put soiled mattresses down there? What the fuck? I know, right? Hmm. Free guinea pig and accessories. Oh, free aquatic turtle. That's funny. I am opening that one. Aquatic red eared turtle with name Zoe needs new home. She has everything for living aquarium, filter system, lamps, resting rock, plant, and food. Hey, Scott, do you like cock? Um. Because there's a free rooster for sale in El Cerrito. Wait, wait. How is it a free rooster for sale? Yeah, free rooster given. Yeah, you know what I mean, asshat. <laughs> 22 weeks old, very handsome rooster, Rhode Island Red. Oh, so it's a good looking cock. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy. Too easy. Oh, man. Uh, free firewood, free sheetrock, a vacuum cleaner. Know, free firewood is very pro- popular with this, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, this is freaking hilarious. Free moving boxes. Ooh, you might need those. Yeah, quite possibly. Ooh, really? Brings home security fire resistant safe? That's hilarious. That's a good looking safe. <laughs> I gotta post that now. Oh, dude, that's a good looking safe. I want to see this good looking safe. 
that that save looks pretty damn good. Huh. I'll tell you once it loads. Oh, they don't have the combination or the key. God damn it. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, why would that... That's the only reason why. Oh, that sucks. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, let's see. A VCR. Anybody need a VCR? Uh, yes. Panasonic VCR. Let's see. What else is there? Oh, man. Curb alert. Kitchen counter. Bookshelves. Headboard. I mean, bookshelves. It's always funny to see that. That's a good car looking coffee table. They, it's funny. Like, they have some good things on here that are actually. Dude, good. someone was giving away a fucking, um, Calyx, uh, Ikea, like the 5x5. Five five. Somebody yeah. is. Wait. Somebody is giving away. Oh, it's a shell. Oh, man. It's got it's a 1971 Chevy Monte Carlo sitting in the driveway. Ah, uh, so it's not like an engine or anything. Yeah, it's just it's junk. It's just sitting there. It's the shell, and he's not parting it out. He wants to sell, or he wants to give it all away at once. That's crazy. Damn. What is what is with people giving away mattresses and freaking yeah? Oh man, I wish I could help this one. There's a cat here. Free TV, it's probably broken. Gorgeous freaking animal. No. But it's an outdoor cat, and I can't have that in an apartment building. Mm -hmm. oh, I found another another uh, another free cock. There's a lot of cock in your area. Well, it's San Francisco, so... <laughs> Seriously, too easy. Yeah, I know. Dude, yeah. That's uh, like a tortoiseshell cat. It's a gorgeous animal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Looks similar to the one I had uh, a while back. The orange mixed in with the black and uh yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. My cat dude, my cat's literally the face like split split right down the nose. One side black, one side orange. And then until it got to the uh, the mouth and the ears. It was really cool looking cat. I miss my cat. Wait, what? Free ice cream if you come to our T V show. I miss my cats too. Um, yeah. We're filming an ice cream themed comedy television show with one simple premise. If we offer you free ice cream, well, who will show up? Nice. A group of ice cream fanatics invite you to bond over free ice cream at a late night taping of the specials ice cream social. No pranks, no ambushes, no catches. Just an hour of free entertainment and ice cold ice cream. Wednesday, oh, it was Wednesday night. Where, where? Oh. I'm watching the CWC. We got pro wrestling to watch, man. I can't do that. That's fucked up. Oh, man. Free basketball hoop. Anything? Free TV from 1986. <laughs> you want free cubicles? Apparently some dot com busted and trying to get rid of their cubicles. <laughs> A man, another cat. There's a lot of free cats. Yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't seen cats yet. Just cocks. So you get all the cock and I get all the pussy. That yeah, I walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, AT and T modem. Yeah, we got some good stuff here for free. There's a lot of like TV stands and tables and couches and stuff. Anybody want some old like Good Housekeeping and Rachel Ray magazines? You could call somebody in uh, Concord. <laughs> free pit bull thank you no adopt our dog oh, that's such a cute little dog I feel bad not being able to get all these animals boy here's a cat named Gladys that's who is a little tubby bastard that's funny retail showcase for free wow Gladys is four kind of sort of old what that's not that old that's cool. I'm, that if I, dude, I would totally. If I had space for that, I would totally use that. It's a, it's a, like a retail showcase. It's like fucking four and a half feet high by. Um, well, I take that back. It's not quite four feet high uh, by tw uh, a foot and a half deep, and uh, doing my math quickly, about six feet long. Uh, and it, it's it's just like what you would see at, uh, 
at a, any old any retail show, a store where it's just glass and you can put things down and have shelves and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, that would be cool to display like statues and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Damn it, I wish I had more space. Hopefully you will soon. Yeah, we shall see. Free dirt. I see free dirt. Yeah, free dirt's popular. Large sheet of plexiglass. Anybody need plexiglass? I've used plexiglass for a lot. Yeah, so. I made some sculptures of plexiglass. Yeah, so. Yeah, so, uh, we, uh, we found some good stuff, but, uh, yeah. I found head. Oh, gosh. I'm going to show you head. Oh, gosh. I don't want to see it. Put it away. Look at that head. Put it away. Look at that head. Nah. That's funny. Mannequin heads. Now I'm going to do something stupid again. Why? I'm going to look at the uh, see if there's any comic books. Oh gosh. Free couch with pull out bed. <laughs> That's a responsible bed. <laughs> it doesn't want to get anybody pregnant. Thing is, it's wrapped in plastic. Yeah, I guess so. Let's see. Oh, what's this one? Over 300 trade paperback. Dude, that's a lot of stuff. No comic books in California, or at least in my what? area. Not my area. That's crazy, man. Oh, Craven Flash Hunt, Essential Iron Man. $7 each, 50 or more, $6 each. You also have 400 comic books, two for a dollar. Roosevelt Island. Oh, fuck that. I would need a list of shit that they have if I'm going to go out there. Crazy. Crazy. Because honestly, 7 bucks a shot ain't bad. I mean, you got an epic collection right there. It's a $40 book for 7 bucks. So I might contact these people a little later and be like, do you got a list of shit that you got that might, you know, pick some stuff up? Okay, so I did a search for WWE just for the sake of it. Oh, and shit, that's pretty fun. Well, what came up was free futon le needs leg repair. Here's here's the uh, <laughs> here's the description. A leg on our futon broke when someone annoyingly jumped on it uh, way too hard, WWE style. We have a new one coming because I don't have time to fix it. The leg is attached to a plywood base, and the part that surrounds the leg broke. It can easily be fixed with some brackets and a new piece of surrounding wood. It is extremely comfortable to sleep on and does not come with arms. That's funny. <laughs> it's pretty messed up that I would find WWE. Yeah. I'll look for that in a moment. I'm just checking out some of these comic ones and... Uh... Yeah, other than that Roosevelt Island one, not much there, so I might contact them to see if they got anything. Now, I'm going to go back, and I shall search WWE. There's 246 for WWE, what? Wow. Okay, WWE 2K16, WWF, WWE Raw Deal Trading Cards. Wow. Wait, 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 is that signed by Bradshaw? That's funny. WWE tickets must sell lower level seats. <coughs> I'm going to open that one. Uh, merchandise. I'm selling two tickets to WWE SmackDown in the Mohegan Sun area. Wow, man. This is so fucking weird. A like, World Wrestling Federation tag team title belts actually has a fucking card. Superstar value plus two. Unique. Are these like playing cards? Mm -hmm. I was confused. Yeah, they're like, oh my god, it's like a playing card game. Nice. This is absolutely horrible. What? Nothing to do with it to close that. That's funny. Oh, God. All these tickets I'm not doing with this shit. Fuck you. What's this merchandise? Why do I look like I see... Oh, shit. That's a fucking McFoley right there. Looks like a Jack-specific McFoley. Nice. Uh, when he's wearing the outfit and no mask. Okay. Yeah, did I tell you? I, I I told you I had all those figures. I finally went through them to see what I had. 
I told you I my my uncle gave me my uh, my cousin's old figures because he was just gonna toss them anyway. Yeah. Well, I finally went through them, dude. I had nearly a hundred figures total, almost a hundred figures total. About fourteen of which were different generations of uh, WCW figures. So, like, I had some that looks like Jack specific that were Hogan and, and Rodman and NWO. And then I had some of the older ones that were, like, hard plastic formed in, like, they're in their pose um, that were not just the normal six-inch figures. Like, they were more like nine-inch figures made of hard plastic. Um, yeah, you couldn't move them at all. It was pretty cool, dude. Some of them, Hall and Nash. Um, they, they, honestly, they were probably bootlegged probably from a flea market or something. So, but it was pretty neat. I got I had a lot of different versions of Mick Foley at a couple different gold dusts. Well, you know me, I'm always a fan of Mick Foley shit. Yeah, I had shit, dude. There was a Flash Funk in there. Nice. I'm actually. Oh. I'd like to get a fucking Cactus Jack dude, figure. You, you know, it's funny. One of the things that I found in there was a, a guitar because yeah, there's an old there's a Jeff Jarrett one when Jeff was with Owen Hart. Um, what was Jeff Jarrett's saying? Well, you tell people this, other than slap nuts, what would you tell them to, to not do? Don't piss me off. Uh, well, on the guitar, because these are action figures for kids, it says, don't make me mad. <laughs> Man, it made me laugh so hard. It made me laugh so hard to see that. I'm like, oh my god. Brian was like, why are you laughing so much? Why is this so funny? I'm like, oh my god, because he was supposed to say, don't piss me off. <laughs> Uh, uh. All righty. Well, hey, we've been on the air for, I don't know, an hour and a half or so. And, sc- and unfortunately, the show's got to be a little shorter because I have to be at work Scott, later tomorrow. Yeah, Scott's ready to call it a night, and I don't blame him. He needs his sleep. So, all right, then. Well, uh, you want to promote the, the social media stuff you got out there so people uh, can get on? Well, I guess I will. What do I do again? Uh, Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott and DX on Instagram and uh, nextdx.deviantart.com. I might update that one day mm-hmm. again. Yes, and you can uh, find uh, your little blood radio on Instagram as well, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can find me, dkorea247, Facebook, Twitter as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I think that's going to do it. Just be sure, uh, if you, if you can subscribe on, uh, YouTube, uh, you'll get all these shows immediately as they go up. You'll get a little alert, which is kind of cool. Uh, they do go up on the grill blood radio, uh, website as well. So you can find us there. If you haven't already, just, uh, be sure. Yeah. Subscribe, follow everything. Keep, keep in touch with us. We post funny stuff on Instagram too. So yay. All right, then guys. Thank you for uh, for joining us and uh, for Scott and the X. I am Daniel Correa, and uh, not next week because I'll be in Texas, but uh, the following week we'll be back to talk two weeks worth of uh, Cruiserweight Classic with y'all, and uh, hopefully by that time maybe Scott will be caught up on Lucha Underground. That would be nice, but I highly doubt it. So, all right, good night, everybody. Have a good one. Good night.